That's a very good question. Um, so we had this problem a lot in the past when we had only full-time employees, right? Then we had a lot of internal projects and some way just to keep people busy and uh, they didn't have real value. Um, with the freelancers now, as we only have 12 employees and 150 something freelancers, there is always an option to say, okay, in summer there is um, that we don't have enough projects. Is there someone who wants on vacation? And then people say, yes, sure, we, we can um, take a month off, right? So the flexibility of freelancers, as I experience it, is really high, especially in summer season, because they also want to go on vacation. And I know, because I ask them very often, that they are not just with us because of, now they just have another job, or well, the work itself, but they are with us because of the culture, because they can focus, they get great support, they get um, no distraction all day and being involved in management mess right so yeah having a lot of freelancers actually that one part to avoid this utilization problem and then to keep them is just by telling them up front that in summer projects might go down and who is willing to go on vacation please let us know and that's how it always always works so we never had this utilization or um, capacity planning issues since four years or five years. And I can also say we never had a problem that we didn't get people for our projects. I had this fear often, but even if it takes sometimes two weeks longer, nothing to compare when I had to hire full-time employees, which took like three to six months. If I just have my fixed costs being not higher than 30%, Right? Because even if in summer revenue goes down because there is not enough work and some freelancers, they also go on vacation, my costs also go down. And the profits that are generated with the remaining work is still enough to cover these 30% fixed costs. That's the, the business model and why I decided to do it like this. For your personal well-being and also of your family, I would always recommend paying yourself a regular salary Right, You can always stop it for a month, but that should not be your standard. Your standard as a business owner who takes a lot of risk should be that your personal side is covered with a fixed salary, so you don't have to care about mortgage and other costs in your private life. Right, that Then you, you also plan with this as a fixed cost, right? because yeah. you, you know that you get what you tolerate, and if you tolerate that your revenue, I mean, you cannot control your revenue, but how you pay yourself, right? If that goes up and down with the profitability and the seasonality of your business, you also feel this up and down as a stress factor in your private life. And I would always try to avoid that because you need to be cool, calm and collected to manage and grow business. I saw somewhere a friend sent me a link to a video saying um, growing a business is like if you have a full pocket of glass trash and you eat it and then you ask for another one is hard enough and I, I I really have a strong desire after these ups and downs of the past to have three things in my personal life being very stable that's my personal income that's my emotional well-being and that's my energy and my fitness if I don't regulate that if I control that everything what's going on in my business impacts me really hard but if I have that under control I don't need to fear about my personal um, finance. I'm not saying I need to have millions on my bank account. I just need to make sure I can pay my my loans. My emotional well-being, I also don't need to be ecstatic and overall happy every day, but I want to be calm, right? Without fear, without worry and all that crap. And with my fitness, I want to be able to like go on a 5 to 10 kilometer run every day. Just do it and it should not hurt you. Right? I want to be feel that fit because then I know that any challenge that comes, I can just tackle it no problem. But there is a study that where I also got this information, not just from experience with my clients or my own business. It's called Building the Future Workforce from the Harvard University. And what they say is that most business owners and managers, they hire like this. Oh my God, I have way too much work. So I need just someone who can help me, who does all the work. Then they go to HR or find a person themselves. They call it project manager. So then they find the project manager and the first job they get is like 
just get yourself an overview and see what you can help me. And then maybe the project manager is really good in organization and they do a good job. So then it starts, they get more and more different work because they are so good and reliable. So then they get even more work and their reliability drops. And then it's like, oh, this person is not so good. He was reliable, but now she isn't anymore. And then they rehire again. So what they lack is clarity about what exactly should this person own and what should he or she do and then what not. So this is what I called role pollution and micro roles, right? When you set up your business with micro roles, very clear responsibilities, then this fluid organization concept that you talked about is pretty easy to manage because we are in your business is taken care of by people. But if you just do hiring with role pollution, then you just have a huge mess of people. Nobody knows what they should do. And then thinking of adding more people that I don't have a long-term relationship feels like, oh my God, I cannot do that. If you are tired of constant staff shortages and you want to scale your team with skilled and reliable freelancers that are tried and tested by my team and our HR team, then below this video, you'll find access to this service where I show you all the steps that we use to find great freelancers or that you can use and install as a copy and paste system into your business to hire, assess, and onboard skilled and reliable people in just a few days and say goodbye to staff shortages forever. The key is really always to have a very streamlined process. Now, I learned while working with a lot of clients that this is often confused with, I need to tell them every single detail they should do. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, you should have clear outcomes of the team. For example, a job post is one deliverable, right? It's one outcome. Then an interview um, report, that's the result of interviewing a person and documenting the result, right? And so on. Maybe also an HR campaign. That's also an outcome that people build from the HR team. This, are, this, this provides a lot of clarity of what these people should create. Not do, but create. And then you have this scrum process, Monday planning, Friday review, and on the daily basis, you have these stand-ups. This is the main process keeping your team accountable, providing transparency over work in progress, right? And managing or identifying problems. When you have that, this, this, this really works nicely, but you cannot just rely on manual work on people doing work when someone just throws something at them by email. <laughs>